Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Jeff at Mississippi in the Civil War. And tonight I'm going to be talking to you about uh, Mississippians and the Army of Vicksburg. And this is part one of a two-part uh, series. And uh, Mississippians uh, who served in the Army of Vicksburg, the official name of the Army was the Army of the Department of Mississippi and East Louisiana, which doesn't exactly roll off the tongue very easily. So I will just be referring to it as the Army of Vicksburg, uh, a name by which it was often called. But uh, the Army of Vicksburg was not officially created until October of 1862. It had its origins in the uh, armies left in Mississippi after General Braxton Bragg uh, transferred the Army of Mississippi, uh, soon to be renamed the Army of Tennessee, from Tupelo, Mississippi to Chattanooga, Tennessee in July 1862. With Bragg's departure from Mississippi, uh, there were only two co organized Confederate armies left in the state. The Army of the District of Mississippi, uh, commanded by Major General Earl Van Dorn, uh, who had about 16,000 men uh, spread out along the Mississippi River from Vicksburg to Port Hudson, Louisiana, and uh, the Army of the West, uh, as you can see here up in the upper right-hand corner, commanded by Major General Sterling Price, who had about 17,000 men in northeast Mississippi. On September 19, 1862, Sterling Price fought uh, the Battle of Iuka, and after a bloody but uh, indecisive engagement, uh, he was forced to retreat to avoid having his entire command uh, cut off and, uh, and destroyed. And uh, shown here in this illustration, uh, this is a wartime uh, illustration of the town of Iuka, Mississippi. And uh, this uh, woodcut engraving is from Harper's Weekly. Uh, it was published on October 4, 1862. And the Mississippi units that fought at Iuka were uh, the 7th Mississippi Battalion, uh, the 36th, 37th, 38th, 40th and 43rd Mississippi Infantry Regiments, and in addition, uh, Ward Adams Regiment of Mississippi Cavalry, the 1st Mississippi Partisan Rangers, the 2nd Mississippi Cavalry, and the 4th uh, Mississippi Cavalry all fought in the Battle of Iuka as well. Uh, casualty reports for the Mississippi units that fought at Iuka are incomplete at best, but uh, the Mississippi units that did report their casualties had a combined uh, 20 killed, 91 wounded, and 21 missing. After Iuka, the two Confederate armies left in Mississippi uh, combined under the leadership of Senior General Earl Van Dorn for an attack on Corinth, Mississippi. Uh, the new rebel force was known as the Army of West Tennessee. And in the Battle of Corinth, uh, October 3rd and 4th, 1862, uh, the Confederates were given a bloody repulse, and Van Dorn was forced to retreat to save his army. And uh, Mississippi was very well represented at the Battle of Corinth. Uh, the infantry units that fought in the battle were the 1st Battalion of Mississippi Sharpshooters, the 7th Mississippi Infantry Battalion, and the 6th, the 15th, 22nd, 33rd, 35th, 36th, 37th, 38th, 39th, 40th, and 43rd Infantry Regiments. Uh, in addition, the 2nd Confederate Infantry Regiment fought at Corinth, and this uh, uh, unit had three companies that were from Mississippi. Uh, there were four uh, cavalry units from Mississippi that also participated in the battle. You had uh, the 1st Mississippi Cavalry, the 1st Mississippi Partisan Rangers, the 2nd Mississippi Cavalry, and uh, Ward Adams Regiment of Mississippi Cavalry. There was also one artillery unit uh, from the Magnolia State, Hudson's Mississippi Battery. And again, uh, the soldiers from Mississippi suffered uh, some pretty heavy casualties at the Battle of Corinth. Uh, again, casualty reports are very incomplete, but the units that did list their casualties uh, had a combined uh, uh, casualty uh, uh, list of 91 killed and 399 wounded. And uh, the casualties were certainly higher than that for the Mississippi units engaged, but a lot of the units in the uh, chaotic retreat from Corinth lost a lot of their records or never kept proper rep records to begin with. So trying to figure out losses for a lot of the Mississippi units involved in this engagement are, are a bit dicey. And shown here in this illustration, this is one of the, uh, this is a real rarity. This is a photo of Confederate dead on a Western battlefield, which is 
extremely rare. In fact, I think Corinth is the only Western battlefield uh, that actually has a an image of Confederate dead on the battlefield. And this, this is a CDV of Confederate dead in front of Battery Robinette at Corinth, Mississippi. And in 1909, W.B. Brack, who was a captain of Company F in the 35th Mississippi Infantry, uh, wrote an account for the Dallas Morning News about the attack on Battery Robinette at Corinth. The 35th Mississippi had been uh, very heavily engaged in the attack on Battery Robinette. And uh, Captain Brack said of uh, his regiment's attack, he said, Rushing in with my company, company to within a few yards of the gun, a soldier attempted to fire. If he did, uh, it meant the ruin of our company, who were packed in the road directly in front of the gun. Checking up a moment, I fired my pistol at the man at the gun. He fell, whether killed or not, I do not know. Within a few feet of the gun, another tried to fire it. I fired upon him with the same result. Then with a, uh, with a few more steps, I was on the cannon. My men and others came on pell-mell, and for a time, it was close fighting. And yes, that, that's a very good way to describe the fighting around Battery Robinette, uh, close fighting. It was a bloody affair. Um, the Confederates were eventually repulsed, but uh, both sides, Union and Confederates, suffered very heavy losses uh, in the fighting around Battery Robinette. In the wake of the Confederate defeat at Corinth, uh, President Jefferson Davis sent uh, Lieutenant General John C. Pemberton to take charge of all the Confederate forces in Mississippi as part of his new command, uh, now named the Department of Mississippi and East Louisiana. Uh, Pemberton took over this command in October of 1862. And shown here is a picture of uh, Pemberton in civilian dress. Uh, this is an image from the Library of Congress. And, uh, Mississippians made up a large part of the uh, Army of Vicksburg, as, as it came to be commonly known. Uh, in a department return dated March 31, 1863, the state had 20 infantry regiments, three infantry battalions of regu regular troops, and three infantry re regiments, three battalions, and one brigade of state troops serving in the Army of Vicksburg. There was also a, a considerable number of Mississippi artillerymen attached to the Army, uh, during the Siege of Vicksburg in 1863, there were 11 batteries from Mississippi serving in the Army of Vicksburg. And after taking command of uh, the Army, Pemberton kept the bulk of his troops in North Mississippi, basically awaiting any move by the Union forces in Tennessee. And he was not going to have long to wait. Uh, on October 16, 1862, General Ulysses S. Grant assumed command of the Department of the Tennessee and began making plans to invade Mississippi. Uh, in late November, he advanced into the Magnolia State uh, with about 40,000 men. He's moving south along the Mississippi Central Railroad, which you can see right in the very center of the map here. And uh, in response to this advance, Pemberton is going to retreat and slowly uh, eventually establish a defensive position around the Yalabusha River at uh, Grenada. And when Grant reached the Yalabusha opposite Grenada, uh, the general, Union general came up with a plan to take Vicksburg. He decided to use his main army to pin down Pemberton at Grenada, and then he would send uh, General William T. Sherman with about 32,000 men from Memphis to go down the Mississippi River and assault uh, Vicksburg, which was uh, believed to be lightly defended. Unfortunately for Grant, uh, his plan was going to go awry very quickly. A Confederate cavalry raid led by General Earl Van Dorn uh, was going to destroy the Union uh, Supply uh, Depot at Holly Springs, Mississippi, which is shown here in a, a wartime sketch uh, from Harper's Weekly. Uh, with, after the, the destruction of his supply depot at Holly Springs, uh, Grant had no way to support his army in Mississippi, and he was forced to retreat back into Tennessee. And this was going to allow Pemberton to send reinforcements to defend Vicksburg from Sherman's assault. Even with the, the reinforcements that Pemberton sent, uh, the Confederate commander at Vicksburg, General Stephen D. Lee, uh, was going to be very highly outnumbered. He had about 6,000 men to face over 32,000 Federals. Fortunately for uh, the Confederates, uh, they were entrenched in a very strong position at Chickasaw Bayou, 
And when the Federals made their main assault uh, on December 29th, 1862, they were repulsed with very heavy casualties. Uh, the Federals had uh, 208 men killed, about 1,000 wounded, and about 563 missing. Confederate casualties were only 207 killed, wounded, and missing. It was a really one-sided uh, defeat for the Federals. Uh, after Sherman's defeat at Chickasaw Bayou, uh, the 1862 campaign for Vicksburg was at an end. And this is a, a neat little illustration. Uh, this uh, drawing appeared at Harper's Weekly on January 31st, 1863. And the caption for this periodical says, the battle at Vicksburg, the gallant charge of the 6th Missouri Regiment. And uh, this is a depiction of the, the 6th Missouri U.S. Uh, in the fighting at Chickasaw Bayou. I just thought it was a really cool image. I really like it. But uh, in the Battle of Chickasaw Bayou, uh, there were a number of Mississippi Infantry Regiments that took part. Uh, the 3rd Mississippi Infantry Regiment, uh, the 3rd Battalion of Mississippi State Troops, the 4th Mississippi Infantry, the 35th Mississippi Infantry, uh, the 46th Mississippi Infantry. Uh, there were also a lot of Mississippi artillery units uh, engaged. Uh, you had companies A, D, and E, uh, and I of the 1st Mississippi Light Artillery, companies A and B of the 14th uh, Battalion of Mississippi Light Artillery, and there was one Mississippi Cavalry unit engaged in the battle as well, Johnson's Mississippi Cavalry Company. And in a newspaper article about Chickasaw Bayou that was published in January 1863, a writer noted uh, the part played by the 14th Battalion of, of Mississippi Artillery in the Battle of Chickasaw Bayou. And the, the writer said, Companies A and B of Major Ward's Artillery Battalion took part in the fights and are deserving of notice. They arrived here on Friday and were ordered to the battlefield immediately. On Sunday afternoon, Company A, under the command of Major Ward, took position at the foot of the hill in front of General Bartow's brigade and opened upon a battery of the enemy. They were under fire for two hours and behaved well. No one was hurt but Major Ward, who received a slight wound on the side of the head. They were assisted in silencing the battery by Lieutenant Stowers of Company B in charge of three siege guns on the crest of the hill. At night, one section of Company A, in the charge of Lieutenant Tarleton, went up the lines of General Lee and were all day Monday in the hottest of the fight. A shell exploded on one of their caissons, killing Captain Hamilton of General Lee's staff, a most excellent officer. He had just rode up to deliver an order to Lieutenant Tarleton. They shot away all their ammunition twice during the day. And after the uh, Chickasaw Bayou campaign uh, ended, uh, uh, the fighting for, the, for the, the year, Pemberton had time to build up his forces to defend Vicksburg. By the end of March 1863, he had about 57,000 troops available for the defense of Vicksburg, and the only other rebel bastion on the Mississippi River, uh, Port Hudson, Louisiana. After retreating back into Tennessee, Grant had moved his army to camps in Louisiana opposite Vicksburg, and he spent the winter formulating a plan uh, that would put his men on dry ground in Mississippi from which he could operate uh, to try and uh, try and capture Vicksburg. He eventually came up with a plan uh, to march his troops down the Louisiana side of the river to a point below Vicksburg. His transports and gunboats were going to run past the Vicksburg batteries, meet up with the army, and ferry them across into Mississippi. And uh, this ends part one. You will have to stay tuned for part two to see how it all comes out. Gee, I wonder how Grant's going to do in this uh, this harebrained scheme to try and uh, try and cross the Mississippi and take uh, take out Vicksburg. But uh, I hope to have the uh, part two of this uh, series up uh, very shortly. Uh, if you like this video, please uh, give it a like. Uh, and uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, well, please do. I, I plan to have a lot more content coming out shortly. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, thank you very much. Uh, good night.